What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel for Webflow Pros. For today's video, I'm going to answer a few questions I received about the Trix website redesign that I just launched. So this was my old website. It featured a lot of case studies, examples of my work. And now that I've transitioned from freelance to focusing on my YouTube, this wasn't sort of going to work for me anymore. So I also had this link page with a bunch of resources like my um, public code collection, showcase clonables, wizardry, and Patreon community. And I thought, how can I make these resources the main focus and feature them in a fun and interactive way? I also wanted to include these trends that I talked about on my Instagram. So it would have 3D, it would have sound design, gamified UX, character and type, and gradient blends. So my strategy behind the experience was really make the user the hero of the story. And I thought, what better way to tell a story than a game? Because that's really a storytelling technique. So I thought, what if the user could land on the page and it takes them through their journey of becoming a Webflow wizard and learning Webflow? And you're collecting all these different resources along the way, like the YouTube tutorials, the Patreon community, different things like that that can help you grow. And um, we're really just telling that story, making the user the focus instead of having a page with just a bunch of information about me, uh, stuff that people may or may not even be interested in reading, making it more of a fun and interactive experience. So these were sort of kind of the mood boards or different things I was looking at. Uh, really focused on this idea of becoming a wizard and all these different elements that can maybe be converted to 3D objects. Um, and then I'm really not much of a gamer, so I had to look at examples of how do games handle customizing your character? How do games handle like progress bar, life bars, different things like that? Um, so these were some of the things that I was looking at for that. And then I started getting into designing the experience and designing, choosing the wizard color, its head shape, uh, maybe naming it. And then it takes you through the story where you're really just um, collecting resources, avoiding bugs, like what website bugs and different things like that. And then collecting prizes along the way. Um, so this is the actual experience. So you land on this page and you press and hold to enter and you're sort of entered into this story where you, you can choose the color of your wizard, you can choose its head shape, uh, different hat styles, and then these resources are available in the menu if you want to get all of them. Um, but you can start this journey, uh, name your wizard, whatever you want, um, or choose a random name. And then once you start the journey, this is where you're really like pressing spacebar to jump, trying to avoid those bugs. Um, and this is where the game experience begins. So whatever resources you collect, those are the ones you get access to. I tried to make them kind of larger so it's easier to collect them. And then you can um, visit that site afterwards. Um, a lot of people asked me or even just said, I love the use of WebGL inside this site and I love all the WebGL elements. This site actually doesn't use any WebGL. All those 3D elements are just GIFs that I created from a program called Spline. So if you have ever heard of Spline, it's really awesome. Uh, it's really like a design tool, basically. So you're learning how to uh, create 3D objects and animate them really easily. Um, and it works just like any of our design programs. So you start out with a blank scene like this. It gives you this rectangle, which you can delete. Um, you go in to add like a sphere. So you have this 3D object. If you hold option and shift, that constrains the proportions and drags out from the center, just like it would in a design program. And then you can change like the color of maybe we want this to be pink. And then all these realistic 3D lights are kind of like, um, cast those darker shadows but if you switch it to the Lambert option this gives it kind of that more cartoony effect that Spline uses in their different um, examples. So then from there uh, you really can just duplicate an object, drag it up and then hold shift and uh, option to drag from the corners um, and then if I want it to sort of like slice this down the middle we can do um, this sort of slice Y and then slice it all the way um, to I guess 90 would be exactly in the middle. Um, duplicate that so you can see it's really easy to build out some of these objects and then I can change the color to maybe this grayish um, and then use the rotate tool and if I hold shift when I'm dragging from the side then it's going to snap into the exact uh, proportions and then use the move tool to sort of drag this up to where they're like colliding into each other like so um, and then if we want to group things together, same thing, we just hold and drag over them, then do Command-G to group. And then if I use this sort of rotate, I can rotate them both to have sort of that rounded thing instead of just a straight line. 
Um, so you're seeing it's really, really easy to just move these around. I think you can even use the arrow keys to move. And then if I want it to create sort of this triangle shape right here, I can drag that out. Um, actually, did I do triangle? I meant to do, because um, triangles are flat. So I meant to do a cone just like this, hold shift and drag it out. And then we can round off the top of the cone like that. And then we can round off the bottom of it like this. Um, and if we want to, we can just right click on a color we already have selected and do copy material and then just paste that material on here. Um, and then just rotate sort of this over a little bit and rotate this like maybe like that. Um, and then we can just move it over in real time. Actually, I'm, I think you can even just drag to move. Yeah, it's perfect. And then we'll duplicate that one and drag it over and we can do flip it, I think. Maybe it would be the Y axis. Yeah, and then we can rotate it again like so. Um, and then just drag that over to that part. Okay, all right, then if we want to actually animate this, what we can do is group it all together and then it's really easy to just create states. And when you hit this plus sign, you have your base state, which is how it starts out with. And then you can just move it up to, on your uh, second state. So that way it would change from down to up and then just create an event that's on start of like the whole page load. We'll cycle it through and repeat it. That just means it's gonna loop. Um, and then if we play that now, you'll notice it's kind of just looping up and down. And then if we wanna rotate pieces inside, all we have to do is make that a state and then just rotate that um, that piece like that. Maybe rotate it this way, rotate it in a little bit, and then do that event to be on start two. Cycle it through and repeat. Um, and now if we play that, you'll notice this hand's rotating while this is moving up and down. Um, so it's really easy to create animations like that. Then I was able to just screen capture this and turn it into a GIF. Um, and then use those, uh, remove the background of each frame to make a transparent GIF and um, just sort of use these throughout the site. So I'll take you into sort of the Webflow build part of it too, because that was another question I got was how much of this is actual Webflow interactions? How much of it is custom code? Um, for the most part, I would say all of the elements were created uh, inside of Webflow. And then even a lot of the animation, if not most of the animation was done in Webflow. Um, the custom code was really just to trigger those things on like maybe a press of the space bar or maybe when items collide into each other, triggering different Webflow interactions. Um, this one like is an example from my press and hold uh, tutorial I did a while back uh, for patrons. This was like the, the actual press and hold part is done with Webflow interactions. It's just the custom code that's triggering this interaction. So if I preview this Webflow interaction and play it, it sort of slides the um, spears out and it sort of animates the text out. And I think I have another one for the press and hold, which is right here. And if we were to play that interaction, this is the one that's actually just filling up the text inside. Um, that was actually pretty simple to do. All I have is inside of this container, inside each of these headings are sort of wrapped in a div. Um, and then there's text inside that div. And then the background, just has a color and it's set to clip background to text just like that. So that way when I increase this height from 0% to 100%, it starts to fill up the height of the text that it contains um, just like that. So that was sort of the interactions for the press and hold part. Can preview this next one. So this one here, basically all of, this is the uh, sort of GIF that I exported out. Um, these are the different head shapes. So each head is sort of inside this container, which is positioned absolute alongside the whole character container. Um, and each one of these images, this one starts out with a class of is show, but each one of them are set to display none until I add on that class of is show to show the different shape of the head. Um, same thing goes with sort of the hats. They're all contained in this div that's absolutely positioned around the character. And if I remove that class of is show from the hat and add it to a different hat, what we'll see is a different hat there. Um, and then for the color, what I did for that 
was actually add in combo classes. So I think I added it to this body. So there's one called gray filter that just removes the saturation. And there's another one um, called purple filter that basically just adjusts the hue to make it a different color instead of that default pink color. Um, and I applied that same class to the different heads or actually I think to the container of the heads. No, it was to these. Um, so is purple and is um, gray filter and apply that to those. Um, so yeah, this was done actually with the jQuery builder. So on click, um, just hide this one, show that one type of thing. And then this uh, little refresh interaction was done with Webflow interaction. So if you just preview that, um, it just sort of spins the little arrow inside when you click. Um, but the actual changing out the name part was done with custom code. Also added these sort of little press interactions. So when you press down, um, it just sort of shrinks down a little bit. That's using this pressed state um, to just scale it down a little bit on any one of these. Um, this is just like a class. So if I remove this class of is selected, you'll notice it filled up. And if I add that class of is selected back to any one of these, it sort of scales it down because it all has this CSS transition applied. Um, so I use CSS transitions a lot for just adding and remo removing classes. Um, but like all of this stuff was all done with like Webflow interactions, button hovers, everything like that. Um, so let's dive into the actual game part. So I'm going to hide this one. And so this is the actual game. Um, all of the elements again, uh, we're using classes. So I have this class of is empty that sets pointer events to none. So you can actually click or hover on that link um, on the live site. And then when the custom code removes that class, um, it basically just sets the image inside to 100% opacity and makes the link clickable type of thing. Um, this progress bar was also pretty neat. So I basically have this fill in here that has a CSS transition applied. That way when I adjust the width of this to maybe like 50% and the live bar goes down, it just slides down instead of snapping instantly to that uh, width. So if we go from like 100% and then down to 25, when I'm adjusting the width of this live bar with custom code, um, the animation of it is actually just being done with Webflow transitions right there. Um, so this is the actual game artboard. And there's a container around it that's just wrapping this up so that way it doesn't like overflow. I think I have an overflow hidden div, but the actual artboard itself is set to 1600 EM, which is 1600 viewport width. Um, so it's pretty wide. It goes way past the width of the screen. And if I set its parent to overflow scroll for a second, you'll see as I start to scroll left and right, all these sort of like GIFs or these images are being absolutely positioned from the top and the um, left all around the artboard so I could create more of these and the custom code would just know to make this because it has that class of bug uh, to make it make you lose points could position them wherever I want across the artboard and then add any of these good items so um, the way this is set up with the code will make it pretty easy for me to hopefully just add new resources whenever I get them um, inside here um, but yeah you're scrolling through and you're going through sort of this experience collecting these different prizes and then you get to the end and it sort of has the wizard um, with your name in this chat bubble, which again is just a class that I added to this chat, um, is show that scales it up from that corner. Um, so when I remove that class, it just scales it back down. This is all done with Webflow uh, classes and transitions. And it's just sliding that up. And then I have this little name wrapped in a span that's replacing that name with the name that you chose. Uh, at the beginning of the experience. So I'm going to actually remove this um, overflow scroll for a second and show you the Webflow interaction. So um, there's a Webflow interaction that anytime you click on this start button, which I believe is um, up here somewhere, um, right here. So whenever you click to start the experience, this button here, it basically starts the game. Um, and that just hides the hides all that experience. And also I think this one here, start game. Yeah, this is the one, uh, has a Webflow interaction that just moves the whole board over. So it's moving this game board from zero EM um, all the way over to negative 1500 EM. So if we play that and it's happening over 60 seconds, so a full minute, 
uh, let me undo that. Um, it's basically just moving this whole artboard and all these pieces are inside the artboard. So it's moving it with it. And then I just write custom code um, to say whenever one of these pieces collide with this character, do a certain action. Um, same goes here. And then whenever we hit spacebar, move this character up a couple pixels. Um, so that's basically the logic of that. But you can see all the elements are being positioned and created inside of Webflow. And then even the majority of the game is done with Webflow interactions. And there's just a custom, a couple custom code bits that sort of tie it all together. Um, so yeah, that's the bulk of how it's kind of set up and working inside Webflow. I hope that answered a couple questions and kind of gave you some ideas of what can be built with Webflow, how you can use even Spline 3D uh, to incorporate that inside of Webflow and just breathe a lot of life into your different projects. So I hope this video was helpful and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.